Uh, first question goes that what actually got you into metal music at first place? Do I, you was, re- I was always... Oh, sorry. Yeah, do you remember when you heard metal for the first time? Mm, I remember the moment it was a uh, music um, class in my uh, school and somebody brought... Um, I don't know if it's even metal, but they, they brought the song Long Live Rock and Roll by Rainbow. And something happened and all of a sudden I was just like losing my mind and everybody was like what the fuck's wrong with this guy (laughs) (laughs) i guess that was my first time listening to something hard rock because i'm i've always been a music fan my father really loved music and uh he's he he, there was music in the house all all day um but i was more into you know the abba and the bonnie m bakara you know when you're a kid you're you're into anything flashy and any anything like exciting and uh, I was not a big hard rock fan or metal fan I saw posters of these scary guys in in the local shopping mall um, Ozzy Osbourne sitting on a toilet has had, he had like two smiling faces on his knee and then status quo looking all scary and I was like oh no this is too scary but then I got hooked when Kiss came around because they were comic book characters and yeah. they weren't so scary. They were more like what I was reading, like the Marvel comics that I was a fan of. So they got me into metal, I guess. That and that uh, rainbow experience that I had with the song Long Live Rock and Roll. So was it like Kiss that sort of got you to form your first band, Metal Militia, or, or how did that came about and how did you become a vocalist? By accident. I mean, um, Kiss, yes. I mean, we're, when we were starting the band, of, I, I guess Kiss got me into playing guitar. Then I went to guitar school because of Ace Freely. I wanted to play like Ace Freely. But the guy at my guitar school said to me that we're gonna, only going to rehearse with an acoustic guitar. So I was bored. And I asked him why we can't play any of the Kiss songs. He, his answer was, I see you like I wasn't the best student so it's like yeah you're you're one of a kind you're like one of those students that can't play for shit but one day you end up being on the stage with a big less power around your neck I'm like yeah that's me <laughs> <laughs> um, but he was he was really like not supportive um, my um, my um, real like first time that I would consider like me becoming a musician and doing something creative was when I got together with the very very first incarnation of creator which was me, Ventor, Pop Fioretti and three other guys that all bought a guitar that was very cheap like 200 Deutschmarks at the time and we all wanted to start a band. First rehearsal everybody showed up, second rehearsal only four people or something showed up. Third rehearsal was only me, Ventor and Rob. That's how Creator started. Okay. So in terms of like your early memories as, as doing like more harsh vocals, what kind of experience it was for you? And, and when you started doing those vocals, were you like doing covers or did you immediately try to like write your own stuff or how did that happen? We had a singer at first and um, me and Venta, we were always like sharing vocals at rehearsals. Um, nobody wanted to be the singer. Neither me or Venta wanted to be the singer. So we had a singer and we got him into the band because his father bought him a, a PA system and he never showed up to rehearsal. So the first, very first gig of Metal Militia that we played in the year 1980... 82. Tr- now or 83. Free, probably yeah. 83. Um, the guy came without rehearsing with us and he wanted to sing and we were like this is not going to work out this is not going to work out he doesn't know the cues he doesn't know anything so i was doing half of the vocals that day um because he wouldn't miss all the cues and he made the show a little bit of a um very bumpy experience um so after that we kicked him out of the band kept the pa system (laughs) (laughs) and um and um 
me and Venta were sharing vocals. We were thinking about getting a drummer at one point. I, I remember we, had, we got a drummer in and Venta wanted to do like be the vocalist, but it ne did, didn't uh, work out either because the drummer was not so good. That was, that was definitely like a good thing because otherwise we wouldn't have Ventor nowadays being the drummer. Um, or maybe a great thing because he would be the vocalist now. I, you never know, but this is like, these were the little things that kind of like, you either go this path or that path and things just didn't work out, you know? Just uh, all the musicians that we got in just didn't work out. And so in the end of the day, out of like, okay what are we going to do we want to record a demo who's going to sing me and Vento started to chair vocals even that even happened until the second album and the third album Vento only sang one song and then he concentrated on the drums but from terrible certainty almost i was the main vocalist so to speak and um and um yeah i guess that's by accident you know i didn't i didn't really wanted i wanted i wanted to be a guitar player but i also also i was also a songwriter very early so i kind of wrote the songs around my voice you know so you started with original material straight away or you no, were, no 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 were no you playing like covers and no were the there first, like some specific covers that you no did? no the first couple of rehearsals we would play songs by i think the first song that we ever played together as a band was breaking the law by Jules priest okay then we did the kids are back by twisted sister um we played the raven version of the song want to be wild okay and we played a couple of all kinds of stuff you know the first show that we did was half covers and half um half original stuff um yeah half we started right away with writing our own stuff because To be honest with you, I think the reason why we started writing our own st stuff was because some of the songs that we really wanted to cover were so hard to figure out that we were like, okay, let's write a song that kind of sounds like this, but it's our own, you know? <laughs> so when you started doing the vocals, were you first like mimicking like Rob Halford and, and doing that and then sort of figuring out your own way to do things or did you try like immediately to sound yourself? Uh, I didn't know how myself, I, 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 this is something that you figure out as a singer, I guess. Um, there was the very early days of creator that's why i'm always saying that the year 84 was the birth of creator i mean there was two like from 82 to to 84 we we're still figuring out things you know we were like we had like a lot of it was more like a metal like heavy metal stuff but then i don't know if it was in 83 or 84 i think it was more around 84 we were all heavily into venom you know okay and then we decided okay you know what the music that we play now is okay it's heavy metal but it's nothing that it's not like Judas Priest or Texan and, and Iron Maid and we're not just so uh, we're not that good yet so let's just speed it all up you know? <laughs> and um, we had songs I remember we had songs um, and I've written lyrics for a couple of songs that were more like generic heavy metal songs I changed the lyrics into satanic songs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's how that's how we started. Um, uh, that's how I started developing as a songwriter. Being, you know, and of course, um, in 84, the fresh and black metal thing was already getting really bigger. Um, especially like, I was a tape trader, so I knew about all these bands like from the underground, like High Rex and... Uh, all those great bands and we were like okay um let's do our own version of this so was chronos like a big influence to you to become like chronos james hetfield tom mariah you name them you know yeah. um jeff becerra from uh, possessed, possessed um snake from voivod um all these people influenced me heavily So did it take a long time for you to figure out the right technique for the singing that you didn't lose your voice after each rehearsal? Do you remember how long that did it take? I was not thinking. 
to be honest with you in the beginning of the band it was all feel it was more feeling than thinking anything so I was very young you know I was like 16 17 around that age and I was not thinking anything I was just trying to figure out how to make music and write my own songs so what kind of memories do you have when it comes to your like first proper Euro European tour in terms of like singing wise what kind of experience it was for you and did you learn a lot on that trip or was oh, it yeah, more like I mean, farting having I mean, good no, time no, no no I mean worse uh, at the time our favorite band from Germany was Destruction and there was a tour that was kind of like a European tour I think we made it to the Benelux in Germany and maybe Switzerland um, so a couple of like two weeks on a tour yeah. bus um, and we were sandwiched we we're in the middle the first band that opened up was the German band Rage Creator and then Destruction and those bands to us seemed like up here you know like PV from Rage he was an amazing vocalist and so was Schmier and still this of course they're still both great vocalists but um, back and then I was it was like learning like jumping into the cold water so to speak yeah. you know um i knew that it's the band had like i don't i think we already had pleasure to kill out at the time and there was this certain moment there where everybody was like ah oh, pleasure to kill is such a great album blah, blah, blah. and we didn't even know that it was such a great album un, 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 until we went out and played it for the people and saw the reactions it was before the internet you know and um so Playing that tour, even though it was only two weeks, really shaped me as a vocalist. Because I had to do like, we, I think me and Venter were still sharing, but I was in the front and I had to, and uh, you know, it was like a, you call it in Germany, we call it Sturm und Drang, you know, it was more, everything just happened. Yeah. So in, in terms of like, spending time on the road and obviously like you said you were very young and now you are still here and mm. able to do this how mm. different is like your warm-up routine for example for the show do you like rehearse and, and prepare your voice for the show yeah i mean we did just did a tour with merciful fate in the us and i had this uh i did like proper vocal warm-up lessons okay. and things on youtube i just had this warm-up whatever uh, five minute warm-up um tour excess uh, like like voice exercises um i need to take care of my voice i i didn't have to when i was younger i was uh, i think i was indestructible back then but nowadays i need to watch it a little bit um because i had some shocking experiences um the first one was it was somewhere in switzerland it was very cold outside and i tend to be I tend to ignore the fact that winter is a thing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I walk around with like shorts and uh, a, a, a thin jacket, and then I, I I remember where it was. We played the L7 in in, in Praten, Switzerland, and it was all cold. And I was walking around all night, uh, all, all all day before in in uh, doing some sightseeing, whatever. And I came into the hall and my voice was gone. I played the show and my voice was just like doing these weird like octaves, you know. Okay. I, I couldn't control the, the notes anymore. I couldn't control, I couldn't focus. I, if I would sing a line, it would go like, you know, like all kinds of weird shit. And I was really scared because it was the first time I've lost my voice. Luckily, Schmier was at, uh, in, the, in, the, in the audience and he taught me this trick. We had a day off the next day. He taught me, he's, he told me, you know what you got to do? Bruce Dickinson once said that or in an interview or whatever. And he's like, you have to drink a lot of water and not talk for one day. And that's what I did. And the next show, my voice was back. But what I'm, my point is, I was really scared because I saw how fragile my voice was for the first time same thing happened when we did 666 the the single and um the last album i had the same experience all of a sudden i didn't dress warm enough and i came from a cold outside into a warm room 
and that's when your voice is uh, can get hurt. So um, I I'm very careful now. You know, I try to keep the temperature the same, and, and I bought a, like a, a, a thick jacket now. <laughs> you know, for this winter tour, and um, yeah, you gotta you gotta become aware of the fact that your body is your instrument, and and that's something that you you learn with when the years come you know i mean it's nobody can you can't expect like bands when they start out and everything is exciting and 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 um party to 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 really care but once you get older and you want to you want to continue doing this and you you take it serious and you want to sing as long as possible um you, you have to take care of your voice So are there like some certain foods or drinks that you wouldn't rather have before the show that you feel that they affect your vocal cords somehow? I try not to eat or drink anything before the show. I drink a lot of water all day, uh, coffee. And um, before I go on stage, sometimes I I know I shouldn't, but sometimes I take like a, an energy drink. Okay. <laughs> uh, But it's not. It's like sometimes it just fucks with my, with my um, adrenaline. You know, it's it's unnecessary. But I do it anyway because I'm so like excited, and pumped for the show. I do a lot of yoga exercises before I go on. Um, in 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 an ideal world, sometimes um, I, I skip that. But also, again, um, it's a. You have to be really careful. If you work out, I, I do work out during the day, but if you work out too much, it's counterproductive because then you get tired from the workout and you get sore and then you cannot move on stage and you, you're not 100% there. So it's like, I try to watch like what I eat, of course. I don't drink, I don't do any drugs, I don't do nothing, you know? And I still lose my voice here and there. So I need to, I need to watch it. Obviously, you have released a lot of albums with Greater, but is there like some specific album or so, or some albums that you feel that you have like taken a big step as a vocalist yourself? Yeah, absolutely. I think on Gods of Violence, there's uh, my voice, my vocals are really, really powerful um, because we push them, and also Phantom Antichrist. Um, I think like uh, it's it's confidence. Um, I I know that I'm not like a a brilliant vocalist like Jeff Tate or um, the guy from oh, for Eric Adams for example but I, I I know my stuff you know and I know uh, my stuff and I can be very convincing with my with my um, voice and the, the songs that I write so um, I think um, on every album I made sure that the voice and the vocals are like set in the right um, Uh, levels and tones and 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 in perfect shape and it's we take a long time nowadays we take like two weeks for vocals for, for okay. on 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 on, uh, on every creator album and I think nowadays we really do um, to uh, make sure that the vocals are um, powerful and strong because it all connects the lyrics and the songs. The music and the the way you uh, your your interpretation and the way you're you're projecting uh, and and you you're trying to get your point across and it's 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 it it it's really like I don't want to get too spiritual here but it's a magical thing and you need to treat it like that you know you need to treat it like magic because sometimes you you think your voice sounds great and it doesn't and then you go back listen back on the next day and there's something wrong with it and um, it's, it's it's a mix between like getting the right mood and getting the right uh, like like the right moment and um, hard work I'd say so speaking about like the early days what were your parents reactions when they heard that you started screaming in a metal band oh they were very supportive um as soon as i got into music my my parents were like yeah that's something you should do you know? okay yeah and um because they loved music and my father was also in the band not like professionally but on the side he was singing in an italian um 
band in the 60s or something one of those um, you know they do, would do like Italian traditionals and um, so yeah they were supportive I remember I had my first guitar my first guitar that I bought was a Les Paul copy like it's 200 Deutschmarks very very um, shitty and I was saving up for an Ibanez destroyer and I had like half of the money and my parents would give me the other half you know okay. because they knew that it's uh, something that I want to do you know they were not my parents were not rich or anything but when it came to music they would really support me yeah they saw that you had the full passion on it yeah last question goes that is there any kind of advice that you would like to give to a young metal vocalist who is just about to start their journey anything that comes into your mind just focus on the music nothing else <laughs> seriously okay. I mean there's so many distractions and there's so much like partying and I mean you, yes there, you need, there needs to be anything in moderation is fine but the most important thing is the music and all it's always will be if you if you decide to become a musician go 150 percent or just don't seriously if you don't feel it and you're like okay I want to do this because I want to party and do something else but um If you really believe in 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 in, in um, like getting your emotions across and 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 um, you know do something with music, then just do it 150 percent or don't. <laughs>